So what we're going to do is we're going to change the outputs used. I'm going to select one because I only want to use one output for this test. Whenever I hit one, I also hit the enter button and that refreshed the page. So that, that shows now that we've updated it. Anytime you change one section of this, you want to update the entire thing. And we have output type. I have these set up for 1804 2811s. So those are the pixels that I run. Um, and then I'm going to open this up and drop the drop box open. And I'm going to set this to be DMX. Now we have DMX set on output one, cluster number one. So cluster number one, output number one is going to output DMX. So what is the length of our pixels? Well, if we're going to go with one universe, then output number one can seriously just be set to 512, 512. That is one universe. Um, in, in truth, and I'm going to hit enter, in truth we're going to actually use only 60 some channels because we're running uh, 9, 18 channel, or 18 RGB channels, so 18 times 3 is whatever. Um, the group sizing for DMX is not important, but if you were trying to um, if you were trying to conserve the number of pixels that you were controlling to make your E682 spread out and work for more pixels or to, to run more stuff, you could change your group size from one pixel per group to, let's say, 10 or 11. You could say 10 pixels or 11 pixels. So that means every 11 pixels would act like one pixel. Um, color order. Color order comes in helpful whenever uh, you receive pixels that are not listed as RGB. Uh, in fact, this was set up for RBG. Uh, this controller last year, if I am correct, it ran um, it ran my Pixel Star off of my Megatree. And those were modules that ran off of the, uh, that I picked up from Ray in China. Um, and they were, the color order was not RGB, it was RBG. And so whenever I made my sequence, the colors weren't coming out the way they, they were supposed to. Well, I had to find out what that exact order was. And once I figured that out, I made the changes here. If I hadn't had done the changes in here, I would have had to go into my LOR sequence and rearrange all my channels so that the first one was uh, the red, the second one was blue, and the third one was green. And to do that for, oh, 65 pixels would have been a nightmare. So I just changed the color order here in the 682. And the 682 can, does the conversion from the LOR sequence to the pixels without me having to do it manually. Now, here we have a start address of uh, uh, the starting address. We have universe number and channel number. This my my megatree uh, pixel star was was universe twenty one. What I would do is I would change this to universe one, and then obviously channel number one, which would be our first uh, RGB channel, uh, would be the red channel. And I would hit enter, and that will update the actual channel number and the universe number to channel uh, universe one, channel one. So when we open up that LOR sequence again, the first pixel, or the I'm, I'm sorry, the first dumb RGB channel is going to be red, and that's going to be channel number one. So now the output on this 682 knows exactly where to send its first packet of data. Now over here it says end address, and if we have, if we're using one output, and we're giving it a pixel length of 512, um, that means the whole first output is going to use one entire universe. What this does is this end universe tells you what would come next after this. 
notice down here I have universe 10 was on my four, uh, my uh, fourth cluster and that was ran, that ran my arches last year and I had it on universe 10 meanwhile I had this on universe 21 um, if we use this whole one universe universe number one up here and universe 10 is already assigned to another uh, cluster what would the next default be if um, if uh, the and what what the what the controller is doing is is just pulling the most prominent data what it would need to fill itself in. It's using logic. I I can't I can't explain exactly why or how it comes up with twenty one. I thought it would have come up with you know, with universe eighteen, but you know, and it comes up with a channel number which I you know don't understand. We're gonna scroll over. Zigzag would be helpful if um, if you had a mega tree or a pixel matrix, uh, you would you have to mention you'd have to imagine a string of pixels going up and then over and then down and then over and then up and then over and down. That would be a zigzag. And um, I use Nutcracker X lights and I also use Lightorama um, uh, Superstar, uh, which I'm still learning a little bit. I haven't got into it much, but it automatically fills the sequence with my zigzag. I don't have to change this, so I just leave this setting at zero. Over here, I have null pixels. Now, null pixels, we're not dealing with pixels. We'll, we're dealing with DMX and dumb RGB. So I'm going to leave all these zero. There's no reason to uh, change this or make this any other different um, uh, setting. So once we put all those settings in there, uh, and and the refresh rate is something that is built into the board. It, it it's for whatever reason it's different from from the first output to the second. Now I've already pre-set up output number two to be uh, output or uh, output two one to be the DMX the default DMX output. Uh, I'm going to leave it as it is. Actually, why don't I change it to five hundred and twelve five one two enter. And for the test yesterday that I ran, um, and they're ending up, everything's ending up the same. The universe is 21 and channel number 6. Why it does that is beyond me, but it's, it's figuring out the logic on its own. The refresh rate is 15 for both of them as well. The next step in the process of setting up an output for DMX uh, for the E682 you can see I have the orange stripe and the solid orange. Solid orange denotes DMX negative or neutral and the orange stripe wire denotes data positive for DMX. What that, what that equates to is looking at this you can see on the right here we have the uh, the orange strip of uh, the orange solid is on the right and the very very far right which you can't see is white with the orange stripe. So those are the pin 1 and pin 2 in our connection to our DMX boards uh, for the uh, RGB controllers. Marked on the board, and it's very hard to see, but marked underneath some of the outputs and on the left side and on the right side are the, sig uh, the signifiers that tell us which each one of these pins stands for. But for DMX, we don't need a positive and a neutral voltage. We just need a positive and a neutral DMX for our data. So I'm going to take our network cable and plug it right in. Now, I did screw these in tight and made sure that they're good. Pushing it right in there. And this is pretty much the basic setup for uh, your E682 to output DMX. So let's walk back through this so that you can see exactly what we did we um, we have gone through and went through our setup page on the E682 we have set up all of our settings and uh, we're going to physically use output number two for um, 
for our output for DMX, which you can see that it's plugged into the second, um, the second output cluster number two, output number one, and we're going uh, we're going to make sure that we have universe number one set so that this multicast controller setup will pick up data for multicast from Lightarama. Um, so we hit a universe we hit the universe number correctly. We've got our um, We've got our, and it's it's kind of hard for you to see unless I turn the lights out because the screen's really bright. Maybe I can make the screen less bright. Yeah, that works. Um, so what? So from this screen right here, you can see that we updated our IP address. We made sure that we had the correct IP address for our controller matches up. Then we made sure that we have it set to multicast. We then. Uh, come down here and set our universe number so that it knows that this can receive data for universe number one depending on what the output is. Then we came down below here and we went to output number one. We changed output one to uh, to output to only one output which is cluster one output number one DMX and we're gonna make it a maximum of 512 pixels for the one uh, output so that's 512 channels that are going to go, uh, uh, no, pixels. 512 would be 512 pixels, which is times three. That's be three universes. That's why this is coming up for universe 21. Aha, because the option. Anyway, now that I've realized what my mistake was, pixel length should be 170, and that would update that pixel length 170. So 170 times 3 would be 510 pixels. Uh, or no, 510 channels, 170 pixels is one universe. And now we notice that universe and universe number one, 510 channels, just like I said. Um, this, is, this is just one example. Right here is one example of being specific and understanding what you're putting in there. When you're thinking channels versus pixels, pixels are multiplied by three. Channels are only singular. So I was thinking channels. Um, I'm glad I made that mistake. I wasn't expecting that. And then uh, we have our start universe is start universe number one. Um, after this, uh, this is the end of the, since this is the end of the video, we will close this up and uh, I invite you to leave any comments or questions down below um, regarding this. This is uh, definitely a very confusing uh, piece of equipment if you are brand new to this. Um, I still find myself making mistakes. Uh, I probably will continue to make mistakes just because we're always in a hurry to get things done. Uh, but with the E682, you really need to take your time to make sure that your settings are correct, that your numbers match up. And, uh, oh, one last thing. It's always important to uh, restart the controller after you've made many changes. I like to do that. So we'll let it roll the page over, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the third part of the video. I'm sorry for it being so long, but it is absolutely necessary. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.